Good morning. My name is Francesca Owens, and I have MACFS. And um, I've been in contact following all the research on all the different possible drug treatments for this horrific, debilitating illness. And um, my intentions this morning was to shower and put on makeup and try to make a video more professional, but the reality is it's um, 10 o'clock and just trying in the morning, and I live in Italy, and just trying to prepare for this video, I'm already out of breath. So I decided I have to do it the way the rest of the world sees me, which is in my pajamas, which is, you know, it's been humbling. Okay. I've been in contact with the FDA, with leading scientists around the world, and I want to tell my story with MECFS. Um, the situation with the amplogen, it seems to me like it's so overdue. Our illness ranks up there with AIDS and other chronic, severe, life debilitating illnesses, yet we don't have a treatment or protocol. Once I was properly diagnosed, I went to my insurance carrier, Kaiser Permanente Rocky Mountain, and tried to get some of these treatments that my doctor was recommending that I had to pay for outside of Kaiser. And lo and behold, by the time I got approved, uh, after being denied, my health insurance was then terminated by them because they said the FDA doesn't say you have to give us these drugs. But these drugs have saved my life although I'm not anywhere back to who I was. So, I wanted to talk to you a little bit um, about why it is so important that you see the faces. And I'm an artist. I was a stockbroker for 25 years. I was in public office for nine years for the state of Colorado. I won um, awards for my community service. I wrote grants for Great Outdoors Colorado Lottery. I won half a million dollars, got nature parks built. Um, I was a Denver woman listed me as, you know, the woman of the month for the artist, and the things just were all my past life. Um, I worked with all the governmental agencies, or Save the Tiger Fund, you know, letters of recommendation, and then all of a sudden, um, I also, there was another thing, let's see if I can find it here. I was also an athlete. Um, I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I'm not sure where my little picture went. Hang on one second because I've got my... Here they are. I had done a fitness contest at the age of 39 and came in at 38. I mean 18, excuse me. And here's a photo of my fitness competition. I was actually being asked after doing all that community service, volunteering, donating my time, I got struck down with this illness that then took uh, nine years before I could get properly diagnosed. My life now consists of setting up pill boxes and pulsating, taking Immunivir, an AIDS drug that is available in Europe that Dr. Klimas has recommended for me, but it's not available in the United States. So I have had to go outside the U.S. to get part of my treatment. I then have my pill boxes every day and every night full where I'm taking valcyclovir. And to win the appeal on this drug, because you guys haven't approved it, I lost my health insurance in America. I take prescription vitamin D, <clears throat> I have to take sleep meds, and I take naltrexone, low-dose naltrexone. So I take the drugs of people of MS, multiple sclerosis, leukemia, AIDS, and I'm paying for all of this. I am fully disabled since 2006. Um, only under this experimental treatment of currently blocking me, and I have been in contact with Amplogen, and I'm, at, I'm in contact with my experts here in Rome trying to get the first Amplogen study going, and they just said, until the USA steps up to the plate, everybody's sitting back and waiting for you guys. Everybody. 
um, the things that I've done to try to manage with this illness is, and now that I've gotten somewhat stabilized, but stabilized means, you know, maybe I get six hours of functioning time a day on good days, whereas before I was an overachiever. But what I want to do is help you guys understand how severe this illness is. And I started making my art again, and instead of doing environmental art, I am doing chronic illness, chronic survival art. And the best I can do is they say pictures are worth a thousand words. So I'm going to walk you through where I've lost, because I've got aphasia, and so I have glitches in my speech and my writing. I've created a YouTube channel to try to help other people who are less fortunate that can't have access to Dr. Nancy Klimas. And I make recommendations on what, what drugs have worked for me, how they have and haven't worked, what tests she runs. And I am helping people around the world. But, you know, I'm a patient. I'm sick. I shouldn't have to be doing this. So, um, but I do it because it's what keeps me alive. And I've met the most amazing people in the uh, chronic illness, chronic survival. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my art so that you can get a better feeling of how desperate we are. I have also will be sending you several of the letters that on my YouTube channel, when these people write me, they're writing in sheer desperation, and I write back to them, and they just say, thank you so much, Francesca, for trying to help. So let's talk about what it's like to live with ME-CFS. Okay. During the period that there was misdiagnosis for so many years, this is the mask, and all they could say is drink more caffeine, try to uh, be creative, and I felt like Everything was going crazy in my mind, and the medical community here has got this archaic, they give us this trash can diagnosis, they've got all the technology of the reports in this little bucket here with a scroll, and it's being passed up a line to a window, a little gate, to try to get over to us, the patients. It, it's, I have to finish putting this together, and I have a letter of the symptoms that are going to go underneath this, but this is how chaotic this is right now with what's happening. Now, people who think I'm disabled, or know I'm disabled, and I live on disability pensions, constantly think that my life is a bed of roses. Now, this one I'll bring a little bit closer, but this is a pillow made of wood with metal hard sign for hope. These are flowers, my bed of roses, leather, and then this is my cage. So to somebody else on the outside, my reality of living on a disability pension looks like it's so exotic and beautiful and wonderful, but in reality, my heart is bleeding all the time, just like all of us, and it's not a bed of roses. These drugs that I take that have given me my quality of life are all strung up and bound where they're kind of your death sentence because you can't afford to pay for these things because the FDA hasn't approved it, yet we need it. It's a matter of life and death. And then when I got one drug approved, my health insurance got canceled. This piece here, you guys, I have to finish. These clips aren't going to be up here, but I haven't finished assembling it. But I'm going to bring it up. This is my brain prior to now, uh, Valtrex, Valcyclovir. You can't really see real well, but there's all kinds of beetles and bugs and the senses of what was happening. Just all the things just crawl over your head, and you're just desperate to get the, the senses to go down and calm down. This work of art is kind of a hokey work of art, but this is what it's all about. This year, I'm building a storybook that will close. 
And this, I call this Klimas' garden, Dr. Klimas' garden. And if you look here, this tree is full of a homeopathic blue pills. And here's all these little woodchucks, which are all the scientists, all working in the past separately in their own laboratories in the forest, in this magical forest, where we're hoping that they can find a cure or treatment for our illness. The bottom line is, I live in Europe, and I speak Italian, and I speak English, and I meet people around the world, and they are aware that, that uh, I think it was the CDC, misappropriated funds for our illness. And they are watching the United States and this decision, not only for Amplogen, but for these other drugs. There are, whether it's Valtrex or Valcyclovir, or there's other pharmaceuticals. At this point in time, many different therapies need to be approved, and then a protocol for which therapy to see which works, because the therapy that works for me may not work for my girlfriend. My girlfriend got on my first drug in Canada, and she's been bed-bound for two years, and the first drug didn't work for four months. Then she got on my second drug, and the girl, the woman, is getting out of bed 14 days a month and walking because her joints had frozen up so badly. There needs to be a better protocol in place and approval for these drugs, and I'm desperately trying to get my life back. I've learned how to live within very suffocating limits. And I'm one of the lucky ones because I can now make dinner and make lunch for my child. For seven years, my kid ate cereal. Uh, and it was only under all these what are so-called experimental treatments that I got stabilized to have half a day of my life. And I'm going to make the best of it. But please, this can't go on any further. We're desperate. And I don't care what the statistics show. There's no doubt in my mind people have committed suicide over this illness many people, because I lived on the edge of suicide for two years, not knowing what was attacking my brain, attacking my kidneys. I just got out of the hospital on Wednesday. I've been in the hospital for seven days because now I'm losing my eyesight. They can't figure it out. It's optical neuritis coming in, and, you know, there's not the lesions, but then it's, you know, and I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I'm a filmmaker, you know, and I'm disabled. So thank you so much for your time. I believe you guys are going to make the right decision. And the right decision is not just amplogen. The right decision is more. Give us some quick and now, and then stay on top of it. You wouldn't ever want anybody in your family to have what we have. It's horrible. Thank you, you guys. And if you want to see who I was before this devastating illness, Google my name. Go to Google and put in Francesca Owens. And you'll find maybe the prior life, and you'll find me in the, my pajamas reporting sick from my couch now on YouTube. Or you can find my prior life of high profile of who I was. So I try to take my magical moments of sanity and clarity and do things for the cause and the purpose of this illness. Okay, you guys, make the right choice. Ciao.